שלום וברוכים הבאים לוובינר לשפות באוניברסיטת סידני. Hopefully you have understood some, or even all of my opening greeting. So we welcome you to Languages at Sydney webinar, organized by the School of Languages and Cultures at the University of Sydney. Um, but before we begin, I would like to acknowledge the tradition of custodianship and law of the country on which the University of Sydney campuses stand. We pay our respects to those who have cared and continue to care for country. Um, so we uh, welcome you, that is uh, myself, Yona Gilad, I'm the modern Hebrew lecturer, and our two wonderful student presenters, Lali and Leora. So um, we welcome you to the webinar of classical and modern Hebrew. The first thing that I would like to do is tell you a little bit about the pathways of, uh, to studying modern Hebrew at the university. And of course, I mean uh, modern and classical Hebrew. So um, as you can see, we have three different pathways. Uh, if you have um, no previous experience, you are a complete beginner or even very little uh, learning experience, you'd probably be best to join our in, uh, introductory pathway. If you have some previous experience, um, namely um, you studied modern Hebrew or classical Hebrew at school or at some other framework, you're most likely to join our intermediate pathway. And uh, if you have done Hebrew, classical and or modern for your HAC, um, continuous, you would probably um, join our, inter um, sorry, advanced pathway. However, we ask all potential uh, students to sit a placement test uh, because that really helps us direct you to the pathway and units that best suit your uh, usage and knowledge of the language. So um, another thing uh, that I want to cover is um, your choice of degree. Um, as you can see on the screen, you have um, three options of, or choices for your degree. You can take Hebrew as a major or a minor or just a few units. A major includes eight semester length units, which uh, are over at least three years. And the major contains a combination of language and culture units, as well as an interdisciplinary project. Another thing that we offer is in-country study, which we strongly, strongly recommend, both for your um, for improving your language usage and your cultural um, experience. And of course, for Hebrew, we suggest you go to Israel and probably study at the Hebrew University or Tel Aviv University or other institution that we um, can discuss. A minor is similar to a major, but it contains uh, six semesters. Again, there's a combination of language and culture units. And um, again, we strongly encourage you to take um, an in-country option. And again, it um, refers to Israel. A third option is just a few units, and those are units of your choice. So in case you don't know, every degree at the University of Sydney has an option of elective units. Those are units that you can take from anywhere almost at the university and add to your major. Uh, both this year and in previous years, we had students, and we have students, I should say, that have chosen to um, take Hebrew as their elective and they're studying, um, doing a, a law degree. Uh, some are studying psychology or computer sciences or sciences in general. So um, we really, really strongly um, recommend that even if you don't decide to study Hebrew as a major or a minor, bear in mind that you can take Hebrew as your um, elective units. Um, so now that I've um, covered um, your pathways and options, 
I would like to delve into some Hebrew. And um, I would like to begin by looking at borrowed words. Um, as you might know, um, words travel between languages and cultures. And um, in Hebrew, we have many, not just some, but many English-based words that have been borrowed into Hebrew. Um, I'm sure you, if you have experience of modern Hebrew, you um, can think of. But for example, I've got those um, five examples. So students, internet, university, theater, and psychology. I'll let you have um, a short pause and try and figure out how we would say it in Hebrew. And um, in case you don't know some or all here, there are. So students are studentim. Internet is internet, no change. University is actually pronounced as universita. Theater is pronounced as teatron. And you can probably hear from my accent that we don't have a TH or th uh, sound in uh, Hebrew. And psychology, which is psychologia, that's a word that comes from Greek. And um, we do pronounce the p. Uh, in the beginning of the word in Hebrew. But as Hebrew has borrowed from English, so has uh, English borrowed from Hebrew. And uh, if you've studied Hebrew before, uh, you might be able to read the following words, which English, of course, borrowed from Hebrew. And you might also be able to tell their meaning. So the first word is um, kibbutz. Kibbutz, and you probably know that it is something quite specific to Israel. It's a, um, a farming um, community that was very popular and is still um, very much a part of Israeli society. But if you would like to know more, you can uh, pose a question. The second word is Ulpan, and Ulpan is a specific um, school to study Hebrew. I'm sure you are familiar with the English word Mashiach. So in English, yes, I'm sure you know, it's Messiah. Uh, next word is Kabbalah. And in English, you'd probably say Kabbalah or Kabbalah. You might be familiar with that. And it's actually the name of Jewish mysticism, which is one of my specific loves. So I had to put this uh, word in, in this presentation. Um, another one is amen. A, I think you pronounce it as amen or amen. That's my Hebrew pronunciation. And the last one is hallelujah. Uh, you probably are all familiar with um, the song and it actually means praise God. So in addition to borrowed words, we also have idioms, between and proverbs, pitgamim. So um, whilst borrowed words tend to retain their original meaning, idioms and proverbs, between u pitgamim, often convey a meaning specific to language and culture and make little or no sense if translated literally. So I've got a couple of the examples. Um, so the first one is Anachnu Osim Chaim. And I'm giving you a minute or a couple of seconds to figure that out. And you probably know that tran literally translated is we are doing life, which makes no sense, but the expression is we're having fun. Another um, idiom is anachnu metim al shakshuka. Again, literally translated is we are dead over shakshuka, which makes little sense. But in Hebrew, it's we love shakshuka, which you might know is a very popular Israeli and now local egg dish. So uh, if you haven't tried shakshuka as yet, I strongly, strongly recommend you do. And it's you find it in many, many restaurants around Sydney, at least. Um, I now want to move to Proverbs. 
and some proverbs may indicate shared ideas between languages and cultures. And I'm wondering if there are equivalent um, proverbs in your culture to the ones that I'm going to present. So the first one is Ve'ahavta l're'echa kamocha, which I am sure is a universal um, motto or way of thinking, which is, um, and you should love your neighbor or your fellow person as you love yourself. And you probably know it's a command from the Torah, the five books of Moses. And Rabbi Akiva um, made it quite um, known. Another uh, proverb is Im tirtzu, enzo agada. If you will it, it is no dream. And you probably know that Theodore Herzl, one of the founders of modern Zionism, coined this uh, phrase in his book in 1902. So that's also, you know, everything that we want to achieve, we can basically achieve. Um, the third idiom, oh, sorry, proverb is acharon, acharon chaviv, which uh, literally means um, last, last, um, you know, nice or something, but it means last but not least or lucky last. So um, yes, I think that um, it, by this stage I have uh, presented what we're doing. And now it's time for you to um, ask us questions and, um, you know, to hear from our students. But just before you go to um, asking your questions, I would like to introduce you to our wonderful student representatives, which are Lali and Liora, who will tell you a, a little bit about their experience. Hi, Lali and Liora. Hi. And um, then you can possibly join in and ask them questions. So Lali and Liora, the stage is yours. Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming today. Um, I'm Lali, this is Leora. Actually, I don't know where she is. <laughs> um, and we're going to tell you a bit about ourselves to start off with. If you want to start, Leora? Yep, sure. Um, so I am Leora and I study, I finished studying at the University of Sydney um, just this most recent semester. Um, and I had a great time. I studied arts and science and I um, majored in neuroscience and philosophy. Um, but at the end of my arts degree, I had a few spare electives. So I chose to do classical Hebrew and modern Hebrew. Um, and yeah, that's it. Uh, I'm Lali and I'm about halfway through my degree in studying linguistics. And I'm actually Israeli and Australian. So that's obviously influenced my decision to take Hebrew. So pretty different to Leora, but we met, which was fun. Um, yeah, so as I was saying, I'm Israeli, so my kind of reasoning for choosing to take um, modern Hebrew as an elective was more like personal to me, I guess. I really wanted to improve my like reading and my written Hebrew and my spelling. Um, and kind of, I <laughs> have been trying, still trying to unlearn some bad habits in my spoken Hebrew that I kind of just learned, you know, growing up without ever really learning the language from an academic perspective, so. Um, and kind of on the flip side to that, um, I pretty much only ever learnt Hebrew from an academic perspective. So I went to a Jewish school, um, Mariah College, <laughs> and um, I learnt Hebrew basically since kindergarten. Um, but from an academic perspective, and I did classical Hebrew for HSC. And then on my gap year, I went to the Hebrew University in Jerusalem and studied modern Hebrew as well. Um, so part of the reason why I chose Sydney Uni in the first place was because that it did have a Hebrew department and having the option to study Hebrew again after all of those years was something that I was really looking forward to. Um, and I'm also Jewish, so, and, and quite um, religiously observant. So I interact with classical Hebrew texts regularly on a weekly basis and was definitely interested to gain a few more skills um, to enhance that sort of experience. 
Yeah, so we came, Leora and I, just as two, like, different examples came from quite different perspectives, but kind of ended up in the same class, which makes it really dynamic. Um, and when we were, like, talking between us to prepare for this webinar, we were talking about, like, kind of our experience studying language at UCID, which we were both kind of agreed it's quite fun because it's much more flexible than a lot of the other more, like, dense subjects because it is a language subject. It's the workload isn't too full on and a lot of it is quite practical and fun and it has some like whimsical elements to it like it tends not to be too dry and dense but rather mixes in like some cultural elements a lot of humor like little stories like it's very interactive which is fun yeah definitely and i think a lot of or at least a highlight for me was some of the class discussions where we were asked questions that i hadn't even thought about in english so it really forces you to try and come up with um, opinions about things and really engage with the world around you um, and in another language, which I think is really cool and unique. You don't get to do that in a lot of other courses um, in arts at Sydney Uni. Yeah, yeah. And I think also specifically Hebrew in comparison with some other languages, maybe. Uh, I think it's quite a cultural thing to study as well as actually the language itself. So like I was saying before, like not only Leora and I, but also our other like friends and peers from our class all came from quite different perspectives. Like we're all, we're different ages in religions and in kind of cultural background even. So like for me personally, it's been really enjoyable to actually learn more about the like Judaism aspect of the language because surprisingly that isn't actually something that I was really that familiar with even though I am Jewish but um, I always came from a very Israeli perspective so it's been cool to learn a bit more about the religion just through taking the language um, because it does incorporate a lot of that into the classes as well which is cool. Definitely. Um, should we talk about our best experiences of learning? Languages at uni. Okay, um, so one of the highlights for me was with um, classical Hebrew. I'd never seen any ancient inscriptions before, so that was really eye-opening and interesting to learn about um, how language was used in the time of kind of biblical texts and around that. And um, for modern Hebrew, I thought the major assignment was actually really enjoyable because it forced me to watch a TV show that I'd never watched before and never would have thought to watch um, and it was a really unique way to understand another culture and society um, from that perspective that was really interesting yeah I agree I also loved that part and I love that the kind of the work we do in the classes is kind of quite um, I would say like progressive and modern in the way that we learn like for example as Leora was saying the big major work that we have to write at the end was actually watching like one season of an Israeli TV show um, and writing about it which I think is really fun and gets you a bit more engaged with the content because I mean we all watch Netflix anyway so might as well write about it. Um, yeah and I also really just enjoyed meeting other mostly Jewish people, not only Jewish, but largely Jewish people, young people and getting to know kind of different perspectives. And also for me, I guess, just um, with the level of language that I already had, understanding like why I say things the way that I do and not just completely relying on intuition, but starting to go like, oh, that there's actually a pattern to it. Like that actually makes sense. It's really challenging and really fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, since you said the word challenge, let's start <laughs> discussing some of the challenges with studying uh, modern Hebrew at Sydney Uni, but um, also I'll start with classical Hebrew. I thought that um, coming from learning it during HSE and transitioning into learning it at university was quite an adjustment because there's certain, I guess, those teaching styles different and the approach is very different. Um, also being in class with people that have such a wide range of skill levels um, in both modern Hebrew and classical Hebrew. Um, so people that are very good at um, speaking and then maybe don't have the grammatical or I guess academic background that I did and then comparing to me which like I didn't really have such good speaking skills. Um, so that was I guess a challenge to try and um, understand the dynamic and 
Um, I guess you learn a lot of soft skills as well, not just language skills, but you learn interpersonal skills and learning how to communicate with peers effectively and also um, in a way that will um, be respectful to where they're at and where you are at um, in your educational journey. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. I think that the differing kind of, um, yeah, skill levels in a class can be a challenge in probably in most languages that you said, not just specifically in Hebrew, but you're always bound to have a collection of people who have, you know, different experiences with that particular language. Um, but also something I think can be quite challenging, maybe not even necessarily personally for me, but as a general thing, I think is really practicing spoken language out of class. Um, because it's, you know, we're quite used to going, taking our textbook or our assignment or whatever, our written exercise and doing that at home at our desk or whatever, but actually finding a way and the time to speak at home, whether it's like with your peers from the class or with um, a friend who might speak the language. Um, I think that can be quite hard, but it's really worth it um, to speak throughout the week between classes and not just in class, yeah. Well, we could share an anecdote. <laughs> okay, when you finish, I just want to add something. Oh, okay, sure. No, you um, go on. We were going to say that um, Leora and I, for example, which we recommend you all do, um, we like voice memo on WhatsApp in Hebrew a couple of times a week or as much as we remember, don't we? Yeah, just a couple <laughs> of minutes and usually you do some correcting um, of me. <laughs> yeah, it just depends, I guess. Really helpful, yeah. Yeah, and like we just chat about what we would usually chat about, like usually what we cook and eat, um, or like just what we do during the week or whatever. Um, like we would chat in English, but we just go, okay, let's do these few voice memos in Hebrew. And it's actually really helpful, I think, for practice. Yeah. yeah. I um, just wanted to add to everything that you've said that uh, Leora and Lali are actually from our uh, advanced level. But even from our beginner's level, we start with, we believe that uh, it's, a it's a spoken language. And the way that we learn Hebrew is that via using the language, we learn it. So even in the first time that you come to the class and you know nothing, and um, you're not necessarily Jewish, we, you know, we like people for all directions. And there's some words that are connected to culture that you know, if we have Shabbat, which is Sabbath, and challah, which is special bread for Friday. And if you don't come from a Jewish background, you won't know. But already in the first lesson, everybody comes out um, speaking some Hebrew and at least saying, Shalom, Ani Yona, Ani Liora, Ani Lali, Ani Amir. Um, so the way we learn the language is like you learn your first language. So uh, listening, speaking, reading, and writing. And another thing that I just wanted to mention that um, quite differently to most um, classes at university whereby you have a lecture and then a tutorial um, in our Hebrew, at least modern Hebrew, and I'm sure classical Hebrew is similar, we look at them as seminars, meaning everything is integrated. And although we do learn um, grammar and um, um, syntax, it's all functioning. So it's all to improve your discourse and uh, in Hebrew and usage, which is both in um, spoken and written. Yeah, Leora and Lali, your stage again. <laughs> um, well, I guess we could also talk about the dynamic in the classroom, because that's definitely one of the most unique features of studying Hebrew um, at Sydney University. Um, I guess we both found that the the environment's really relaxed um, and conversational. It can, it caters to a variety of levels um, and you can kind of find at least one or two people in the class that are, um, that you feel like you, you're comfortable experimenting with the language with them. Um, Cause it can be really intimidating at the beginning if you're not used to speaking. So definitely there's an opportunity to feel comfortable um, at any level. Yeah, it's definitely a really relaxed atmosphere. It's a class you, most people, I think, really look forward to because it's usually uh, on the smaller side. Everyone knows each other, you know, probably have a group chat. Like, it's very chill. Um, and the actual just kind of energy in the class is quite fun and interactive rather than, like, kind of silent and awkward. Not to shade any other units, but yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to share that uh, besides teaching, I also research um, 
into teaching and learning. And the one thing that really, really is um, of interest to me is listen to students' voices and learn or find out how the learning process happens to them. And um, I don't know your, our listeners where you come from, so I, I'm not sure who I'm talking to. But today with um, language learners, we don't compare you, the language learner, to a native speaker, but to a second language um, speaker. So Leora, when you, manage, uh, you mentioned it's a little bit uh, intimidating, I think one of the things that at least in my classes in modern Hebrew, I really encourage people to have a go and express themselves. And, um, you know, English is not my uh, quite first language and it's not too bad, but even today I would make mistakes. And even when I speak really, really quickly, I would sometimes um, make a mistake in Hebrew, which I know is a mistake, but just comes out naturally. But, you know, it's not acceptable in writing. But what I want to say is that the most important thing for me uh, as the teacher is to get people to communicate and we try and I'm glad you like the final um, writing task. But I think that we try and have our lessons interesting to you, the learners, because otherwise you, you won't talk about it. Mm. <laughs> That's it. Thank you. Yeah, um, we thought maybe we should just briefly mention the workload because, you know, that's usually something that people consider when they're choosing their subjects, which is fair. Um, so we found the workload to be pretty reasonable and definitely not, as I was saying before, not too dry and academic. Um, I th yeah, I mean, obviously we all experience it differently depending on our strengths and weaknesses with the language, but um, it's quite interactive and it's really good to like lean on your um, classmates in the sense that you know like hey have, who's done this exercise like what do you guys think does this sound right to you and kind of interact with each other it's really helpful uh, I think we might just move a little bit to um, uh, questions if there are Leora do you want to start with the first one um, yeah so what career opportunities can come as a result of learning Hebrew in you said <clears throat> so there are a number of different avenues you could take you could <clears throat> use Hebrew to get into, I guess, more diplomatic or international relations field. Um, it's definitely useful if you want to become a Hebrew teacher or researcher. Um, I don't know, or classical Hebrew, I guess, if you want to study ancient civilizations, it's definitely very useful or anything in the religious sphere. So um, that's, do you have anything to add to that? No, oh, yeah, I would agree. And I guess if you're somewhat um, interested in politics and of the like, I guess, knowing Hebrew and English is very useful politically. <laughs> yeah. And I would like to add that Israel is now um, really strong on technology. Mm. And I think um, having another language in general is, is a huge bonus. Um, first of all, knowing this other language. And secondly, it makes you realize um, how your own language function. And it also is a pathway to a different culture and a different way of thinking. And I think living in a globalized world, um, we would all benefit from knowing more than one uh, language. Mm. Uh, are there opportunities for exchange to Israel? Yes, they are. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Yana, but I believe in the major, they definitely are. And in the minor, it's also a possibility. I don't believe that you can go on exchange to Israel if um, modern or classical Hebrew is only an elective. Is that right? Yeah, no. So um, we actually work very closely with the Hebrew University. And we actually, um, our courses are... Um, uh, aligned with their courses. So I personally have a lot of uh, contacts with the um, faculty at the Hebrew U. And um, we even have an option of going through our winter. No, it's our summer and their winter. So um, being there for about a month, you actually uh, move a level um, in your knowledge of Hebrew or your studies of Hebrew. And this is really strongly recommended. And Leora, you've been there. Do you want to talk a little bit about your experience? Yeah, sure. Um, I went there and studied um, modern Hebrew and I did their uh, winter Ulpan as well. 
Um, I thought it was really great you um, really get a sense of um, Jerusalem and living in the city. It's very, I guess the um, workload is, is pretty reasonable. So you get to explore and in, um, immerse yourself in the culture and definitely you get a chance to apply the language skills that you learn by actually being on the ground there. Um, and you meet people from all over the world because it's obviously quite a renowned place to learn Hebrew. So um, you definitely, you, your horizons are broadened a lot by going there. Thank you. Uh, Leora, would you say that someone who's learnt modern Hebrew can understand classical Hebrew? Um, That's well, such a really good question. Yeah, I guess, I guess it gives you a, an advantage from uh, not knowing any Hebrew because the letters, well, the letters actually look a little bit different mm. and some of the grammar is different. So I guess it's relative. Yeah. It definitely gives you um, a better kind of head start than, as Leora said, knowing no Hebrew at all, but they are surprisingly different. But it's fun when you do kind of find the similarities. It's fun. It's kind of like a game, like, oh, I see, like that word became, oh, yeah. Well, I experienced that at least. I wanted to add that in previous years, um, we've had a few students, not Jewish, who came from classical Hebrew and, you know, having classical Hebrew, they wanted to do modern Hebrew. And surprisingly, they did amazingly well. And for me, from um, a researcher uh, perspective, it was amazing because classical Hebrew, we don't have it as a spoken language. Obviously it was, but we don't have recordings or anything. The only thing that we have are inscriptions. And even in the Tanakh, the Hebrew Bible, there are sections that we, we actually know that it's um, some spoken language and not just um, you know, literary form. So for me to hear someone coming from classical Hebrew speak modern Hebrew is fantastic because it's, it sounds different, a little bit archaic, but you can see that this language was used 3,000 years ago. So it's quite amazing. Yeah. Um, some reasons to study Hebrew at the university. Um, as we were sort of saying before, there are lots of different reasons, which I think is part of what makes it such a fun um, course at the uni uh, is that there are a lot of different reasons. Um, some of them are personal, like for me, for example, it's more like connecting with my, with my Israeli culture, improving my Hebrew so I feel um, more comfortable speaking with my family when I visit them in Israel. So it's quite personal and not so much career focused, whereas some of our other peers, um, one of our peers, he's studying um, law and he, um, already speaks Arabic and English and now he also speaks Hebrew and I mean how great's that for his career sort of thing um so yeah it varies a lot yeah um I think you've covered covered most of it there um but yeah I guess from my perspective um I would say you could choose to study Hebrew even as just one a one-off course or maybe a couple of semesters if you um want to do something totally different to whatever else you're studying. Definitely for me, like going from neuroscience and philosophy, it's totally different. And it's just like a different, a different change of pace and um, very exciting to connect um, to something cultural and different. Do you learn essay writing in Hebrew in the course? Can you read a book by the end? Um, I guess, yeah, you do. You definitely learn essay writing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, can you read a book by the end? Yeah, I mean, it depends how long you have, really. Um, yeah, how much time you commit to it. Um, and also how much practice you can do, how much you can speak and read in your free time. Um, and I guess also where you started, what your skill level was in the beginning. So not so much a yes or no question, but definitely a possibility. I feel like we could both read a book. Well, I do have Harry Potter 4 in Hebrew sitting on my bookshelf, but I haven't opened it yet. <laughs> but um, I just want to remind you, we do read um, short stories. And one of our favorite authors is Edgar Kerry that you might have heard because he's even quite well known in Australia. He's been here a few times for the Sydney Writers' Festival. So certainly short stories. And also we have some... Uh, easy readers in Hebrew. So, yep, you have an opportunity. 
Uh, how much Israeli culture is involved in the course? Um, a lot, I would say, which is really fun. Um, we kind of come at the language from lots of different angles, like music and food and poetry and film and culture. Um, yeah, I would say, would you say that you've learned a lot about Israeli culture through it? Yeah, definitely. And when we read things, um, maybe they come from Israeli newspapers or they're commenting on some social issue that's relevant to Israel. Um, and then you, I guess you get a different perspective. So that's really cool as well. Mm -hmm. What I wanted to add is that um, for people, because again, we can't see who we're talking to, um, you're very welcome to continue um, corresponding with us and by email through the university or any other way. And we are um, always open to um, answering questions and just continuing the discussions. So thank you so much, Liora and Lali. Thanks. And I hope for our audience that we see you at the University of Sydney one day. Thanks everyone. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye.